Hi everyone. This is your classmate Ursula and tonight I'm doing homework. So I'm going to be getting ready for the game that's coming up this week called the Aspect Game. It's where we look at our Starseeds Astrology Galactic Soul Connections reports and start to try and understand what some of the aspects mean. So we figured out how to do the constellation count. In other words, we first start by looking at all the constellations, the big ones like Andromeda, Orion, Cetus, and you just count up how many, let's say if you have Andromeda, how many um, connections. This is just broad brushstrokes. And so then you end up with, let's say, 14 constellations. And then the second step is to go and try and count how many stars you have in those constellations. Okay, and list them. So for me, I have um, Andromeda sextiling Almach. Almach is the star within the constellation Andromeda. So I started to count all my constellations. And then I started making a list and um, looking at how many stars I was working with. So it's so fascinating because then, of course, later when we get really advanced, we'll look at the stars and count how many planets and if we're from a particular planet within that star. It took me a while to wrap my mind around, okay, here's a constellation. Here's a star in the constellation. And then there's planets within that star. Okay, so that's kind of how the game works. Now we're at level three and, well, that's my printer talking. Level three is where we will now play the aspect game. And to help me, I brought along my fancy light as a feather ostrich feather. So ready to play the game? Okay. I'm going to share my screen and we have been gifted by one of our fellow classmates named Syl. Sylvia has under the file section in the Facebook page gifted us with what she calls a mind map. Let me show you what that is but she's done a great job to give us a one page stop you know and just show us how she's thinking and learning about the aspects and the whole kitchen sink. Let's see, here we go, portion of screen. Okay, and here we have Sylvia's mind map. And I hope um, if she's listening that she will correct me if anything I say may be in the wrong order. But in the center of her mind map, which first of all to me either looks like an octopus or reminds me of, you know, the brain synapse, how you try and create more webs in your brain so you don't get old and you know, you got to keep growing your brain. Well, you young whippersnappers don't have to worry about that. Anyway, sorry, I digressed. Here we go. Star seed report. So in her map, she says, here's the planets. Here's the aspects. And within the aspects, she says, here's the language. Now, many of you who've done astrology, and if you haven't studied astrology, don't worry. The galactic light language that Julia is teaching is not the same as Vedic astrology or Western astrology. So there's some similarities, but there's also a different way to play this aspect game. Okay, so who are we playing with? We're playing with a conjunction, an opposition, trines, sextiles and squares. So that's only one, two, three, four, five aspects. So we got five fingers, five fingers. We can play the aspect game. Okay. But before I get there, I want to show you how Sylvia did the rest of the chart. She broke down from the aspects. What is an opposition? What is a conjunction? What is a trine and sextile? What is a square? Okay, so that's the rollout uh, for how she is mapping using a visual, the amazing teachings by Julia. 
Now, nothing will replace Julia's teaching, but if you come up with a very creative report like Sylvia did, you know, please feel free to share with all of us because this is a very Aquarian class where we're really helping everybody expand together. Okay, so feel free to share, feel free to ask questions. Um, so if you want to go in the course material and figure out where do I go look for aspects, Julia reminded us that if you push the function F key, like control F, you, that serves as the find notion inside her teachable, Starseed's teachable. So that's one way. But the shortcut, Anne-Marie went and posted in the chat room that go to lesson four, section seven, and then lesson six, section seven. And that's the hardcore written material that all of us need to just get ourselves a cup of coffee, uh, drink it, and go to that place first. So what I'm showing you now with Sylvia, she basically did the outline to help us then fill in the blanks from Julia's teachings. Hope I'm not confusing you too much. Let me give myself a little more ostrich air. Uh, thank you very much. Here we go. The Starseed Report. I'm going to start actually up here with planets. So what she said is a good reminder. When you just begin, you want to look at the outer planets, Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune. And look for anything that says conjunction or opposition, right? To find your soul origin. But any planet or constellation showing up in Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune, it has a very distant soul history. Okay, so I should have said any constellation or star showing up in the lines of Pluto, Uranus, or Neptune will indicate potentially a very distant soul history. So you may not, you know, connect to that um, constellation or star, but it's on your chart. And this is the natal cosmic wardrobe that each of us came in with. So you may not be able to see your wardrobe from the backside because it's so distant, but turn around, turn around. It's there, it's there, I promise you it's there. Okay, so then what Sylvia did, let me move this so I can see it a little better, is she talked about the second step would be to look at your sun, moon, and ascendant lines on your report, your Star Seeds Astrology Report, and those are at the very top. And here we find our most recent soul connections. These are the ones that are going to feel very familiar. There's a lot of people thinking, oh, I'm a Palladian. Are you a Palladian? Well, Julia's program helps break open that whole star nation galactic history. And there's more than just the Pleiades, let me tell you. So the sun, moon, and ascendant is where we're going to find our most recent soul connection. And if you have a conjunction or an opposition in your sun, moon, or ascendant, we can, we've learned you can look there to see what was your most recent lifetime before coming to this one on Earth. Okay, and I'll just wrap up the planets here that Sylvia posted, where she says, now we go to like the more personal planet. We did the outer and the most recent, and now we get to the, uh, the personal planets, which are basically being bookended. Origin, most recent. And then you got the rest in the middle, right? So we have the Mercury line, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. These are your soul connections to those places. One, Sylvia says, in the not too distant past. Then Sylvia wrote, in between the most recent and most distant soul history. Okay, so if you just look at that whole arm around planets, that's, you know, planets, the lines, there's a whole story there. But the aspect game, I gave you that big front um, context just for anyone coming new to the, um, to the chat room. Okay, so aspects, we're just dealing with five in the game. Conjunction, opposition, trine, sextile, and square. Ba-boom. Now, Julia says, 
the most pivotal one to look at first would be the conjunction. Why? Well, let's look at Sylvia's, here it is, conjunction. The conjunction, before I read what she wrote, is this is definitely a, a strong indicator that you were incarnated on that star, within that star nation. If you ever wondered, who are my star family, or who's, where's, where am I from? Who are my people? Where, you know, galactically. Look at your conjunctions, and, and then that'll be like highlight, highlight, because that's a big clue. So this is what Sylvia wrote. She wrote, learnings well used in the current life. Good. Okay. So anything, let's say if I was in Andromeda, um, I may, if I have a strong conjunction with Andromeda, I may have already learned those lessons in this life. Check the box, right? And she wrote, most significant and strongest soul connections. Yes. Conjunction, conjunction. So in astrology, that just means it's like this. It's almost like a merger. Conjunction. All right. Soul energy star system. Part of your identity. Mm. It's well integrated, that type of energy with a conjunction and positive experiences there. Most likely incarnation there. So if we just stopped our aspect game and I said, pause now, go to your starseed personal report, your report, and just make a list of all your conjunctions and then set it aside. And that's your homework, right? If you just start there, that's your homework. Go Google, go read what Julia has, watch her videos, watch the links that she sends you to. That's a place to focus. Let's see, with all of the, um, I think there's around 15 constellations. Excuse me, I'm misspeaking there. She's got a lot of constellations listed and in the second revision of her calculator with Hector, they're gonna be bringing in an even more so. So with the aspect game, find all your conjunctions. You know, you're kind of putting the family train together. These are your galactic cosmic family. And I'll just give you a hint with one of mine. Hmm, hmm, which one? Conjunction, conjunction. I have a conjunction to Sirius A in Canis Major. So Canis Major, the big dog constellation, Sirius A is one of the stars and it's conjunct my Mars. Don't tell anybody. That's my Mars in the 10th house. Ah! So, but we don't want to talk about Mars in the 10th house just yet. We're just looking at what energy with my conjunction am I going to, you know, resonate with? And if I go back to Sylvia's chart, it says, I've learned so much of that. And I think the uh, Sirius A people, you know, they're the ones with the big foreheads <laughs> and the huge brains. So uh, I do like learning. I do like sharing. And so maybe what I can take away from just this idea would be, eh, I have a predisposition for wanting to learn. And there's other stuff. Okay, so that's homework number one. Find your conjunctions. I'm going to pause here so I can let you guys get that piece going. Let me stop the share. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Just find your conjunctions and then come back in like five or six minutes because some of us don't have that many conjunctions. But um, this is where I want to put like a soul collage together where we just say we know our conjunctions are our soul family. So wouldn't it be fun then just to stay with the conjunctions and we just go and get our star families, find the pictures on Google and put your little happy face in the middle and there you are. You definitely have a strong, like 99.9%. .9 yes. Conjunctions. I've been there. I've incarnated there. Good to go. I'm going to pause. See you in a minute. I'm going to come around and tickle you if you fell asleep. This is Ursula. I'm back. Hopefully you've done your homework and found your conjunctions. And when we get together in the galactic chat room on Wednesday 
Maybe some of you will feel comfortable to share or have a little piece of paper with your happy face in the middle and your conjunctions, you know, with the, you can find the constellation and then a star, or you can go find some of those creepy pictures <laughs> of aliens and you can put those in there, whatever you decide to do. Um, or you can just keep it really safe and just, you know, write the word uh, Sirius A from Canis Major. All right, so are you ready for the second part? Gotta wave my little feather. Light as a feather, we gotta keep ourselves light as a feather, right? All right, next step is oppositions. Hmm, hmm. So you know in astrology language, oppositions are, um, someone's over here, someone's over here, then there's usually something in the middle. <laughs> so the oppositions are that 180 degree typically, you know, like, uh, so we know already that you're holding an axis of duality. And let's go back to Syl's chart and see what she says about the oppositions. Thank you, Sylvia. She's just so amazing. Here it is when she wrote opposite. And she says, there's a strong soul connection, just like conjunctions. There's most likely an incarnation. When you see an opposition in that star or that constellation, then she wrote their soul energy from there, but it may not be fully integrated now in your current earthly lifetime. So again, we're going back and holding that axis. It can inform you, but okay, have you cleared all the lessons as you're holding this idea of oppositional energy? Du, 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 du. And then she wrote, um, so the soul energy from there may not be fully integrated now, and that you could encourage your client or encourage yourself that now you could um, make an effort to access that kind of balancing and integration of the energy in this lifetime. And when you look at your oppositions, you're gonna find a possibility of how much unresolved karma you may still be working on. And Julia, in her vast number of charts that we can download in the practitioner's class, She'll say, get your pendulum out. Oh, I should have a handy pendulum. And you can douse to see what percentage of karma am I holding when I see an opposition. I'll give you an example. Let's see. Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. What am I opposing in this lifetime? I brought in, okay, um, on my Mercury line, I brought in the constellation Cetus which in the old days was like the sea monster. Later, they called it the whale. I like the whale better than a sea monster, right? Um, and my Mercury is opposite in Cetus, um, a particular star named Tau Ceti. Okay, so I would write down all my lists of oppositions and the stars. So constellation plus the star, because I want to kind of you know, this is a language, and so we're going to just keep maybe doing some three by five cards. Here's a stack for my conjunctions, and here's my oppositions. Okay, well, let me wave my little ostrich feather. I'm going to take a pause here for you now to go make a list, please, of all your oppositions, noting, noting what's it oppositional to. So not only, okay, so is it Jupiter opposite something? Is it your sun opposing or opposite, um, you know, Canis major? So it's good to write down what is opposing so you really understand. Because um, like my example was, okay, I have Mercury and then I'm opposing, I'm carrying the oppositional energy of Cetus with Tau Ceti. So, so my, my Mercury, okay, is opposing. So maybe there's something that I'm still trying to work out in my communications. It happens to be in house one, myself. So it's like, okay, okay, just hold in that little narrative. So I'll be right back. Work on that next because we did conjunctions and now we're having you do your oppositions. I'm going to stop share and I'll be right back. Well, hi, I'm back with my magic feather. 
Okay, um, the third part of our aspect game is going to be looking at, this is the fun part, we're going to be looking at the gifts. Where are the gifts that we brought in from all of our cosmic travels? You know, we brought in a big suitcase and now we get to look at what's inside the gift. Oh, and of course you got to see, you know, being a mom, I got lots of these running around the house. Okay, the gift. So let's go to sales chart and I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Okay, so now, so we've looked at the five aspects, starting with opposites or oppositions and conjunctions. Now we're here at trines and sextiles on sales chart. And the trines um, and how to read sales chart. She says the positive soul connections with beings are from the planets, excuse me, the stars and the constellations where we have trines and sextiles. Okay, so just think if you want to just now go make a list of all your trines and sextiles, let's take a moment, see what my dog wants, but review your own chart and just write down all your trines and all your sextiles and I'll be right back. Okay, let's get back to the chart. Thank you, Sylvia. My heart is full just looking at your report. Okay, I didn't get to finish. Um, for trines, which are gifts and sextiles, right? Um, this is fun for me to look at. Okay, what's in my wheelhouse that I can call upon? This is like the go-to. Sometimes it's so easy, I forget that I already have it as a gift. But when I work with other people, I can see their gift and then see how, you know, some of this puzzle works. So when you write down all your trines and sextiles, I'm looking at Sylvia's chart and it said, um, if you notice, let's just use an example. If I have a trine to Lepus, the constellation Lepus, um, trining the star Nihal, okay? This is where the game gets a little interesting. If I see that I have no other conjunctions or oppositions to Lepus, the bunny rabbit constellation, you know, that is a factor. And um, it might mean that I didn't incarnate there. I might have just visited that star system. And I can call upon them for support in this lifetime. So, um, again, not necessarily incarnation, not embodiment in that star nation, um, which is very different than a conjunction, okay? But I've got some superhuman gifts coming from those trines and sextiles. All right. So oppositions, conjunctions, trines, and sextiles. I'll be back. And then we can do the final, the fifth one, which is the square. And I know that we're oversimplifying um, how to move with the aspects, but you get to have fun looking at Julia's material and going a little bit deeper in each one. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're here to look at your chart and look at all the squares. Do you have a lot of squares? So when we think of squares and we think of oppositions, we are working with harder angles. You know, trines, it's ease and flow. Conjunction is kind of merging energy. Um, but let's look at Syl's chart. She wrote, there's unlikely an incarnation when you see a square, especially if there's no conjunction or opposition connections. So it's the same thing we did with the trine. We're always looking for, was I just visiting or did I meet somebody from that star nation? Could have met someone from that star nation in another place or on a ship. It doesn't necessarily put me in, in, that, um, in that space. Does that make sense? So a square uh, is a possible visit, but here's the thing, the lessons to learn. 
there is unresolved karma, very strong chance of unresolved karma with beings from there. Okay, so this is where the fun comes in. When we look at why did we even incarnate on earth? Why are we here? Oh, I guess I can stop sharing here. It's this funny cosmic game of how our souls really want to just expand. So if everything was all wonderful and heavenly and going well, where's the potential for expansion, right? So we kind of say, let's go to earth and play this game, or let's go to earth as the school to learn. And sometimes we think we can take on more than, I don't know, when we're on the other side, I understand that we'll say, oh yeah, I can do that, I can do that. Then you get here and you go, what was I thinking? So if you are a counselor and someone who wants to test this idea for accuracy, start looking at charts of your loved ones. Or even if you're not a counselor, if you're curious, look at the charts. The most informative aspect, I think, are the conjunctions and then the karmic aspects. You know, what, what lesson am I really here to learn? And have I learned it? And I love, again, how Julia will take one of her dowsing charts, you know, I got my little dowser out here, one of my dowsers, and you just pendulum over to find a yes, no, um, and ask, you know, did I learn this lesson in this lifetime? What, like 100%? Am I 100% there? Uh, 80%? So finding out where your oppositions are in which constellations and then star nations that's going to be some clues, okay? And I got to put a big, 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 big plug for Lissa Royal Holt's book, The Prism of Lyra, because that just lays the galactic groundwork. And then, of course, her Golden Lake book, and then her galactic heritage uh, card deck. In fact, I might come and make a small little short funny video to share with you guys on how to learn about our star nations using Lissa's card deck. Pretty fascinating. Well, I hope this was helpful. Hope it wasn't too long. You've got your little homework assignment. And so if you want to come play the aspect game, do this homework ahead of time so you don't have to pause and try and find all your information, okay? Especially newcomers. Just let yourself come on into the water, list out your constellations, list out your stars, and now start listing out your aspects. How many conjunctions and where, how many oppositions and squares and sextiles and trines and blah, blah, blah. Okay? So if we work together and treat it like a game, we are going to have this foundational part to then start reading some tea leaves. Okay? So have fun. We're in this together. And if you ever need support, Come to the chat room, make it to as many Q&A recorded sessions with Julia that you can, and watch some of her YouTube healing sessions. Amazing! You're going to find how she goes very quickly. Here's the groundwork, and then she zooms off into this intuitive artistry, which is inspiring. It's like, okay, she can do it. Maybe I can try and fly with her. So have fun along the way. You've got plenty of support. And welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the year when soul families are meeting each other. So see you soon and bye for now.